Today we're out here in a salt marsh tidal creek at low tide pulling a seine net to help us investigate what kind of marine life lives here. Now if you're not familiar with the seine net, it's a long curtain of a net and just like it takes two to tango, it takes two people to pull the seine net. Now there is a definite up, uh, top and bottom to the seine net. The top of the net has rows of floats that keep the top of the net near the surface of the water. It's got a row of sinkers at the bottom that keep the bottom of the net on the bottom of the marsh. This is a people-powered net. So there's a long pole on either end, and basically two people pull it, preferably against the tide, uh, to help capture an assortment of marine life. And if you look inside the mouth, you can see the gill rakers there. So these fish feed almost like baleen whales sifting krill. So what the, the what they do is the anchovies swim through the water with the mouth held open wide, letting the water rush into the mouth. Those little uh, comb-like structures, the gill rakers, sift uh, plankton out of the water, which they eat. And then the rest of the water passes through their operculum, their gill flap. Here, this is a silver side. So the silver sides look superficially a good bit like the anchovies, but notice the mouth is distinctly different. Uh, they feed on different items uh, and in different areas. So uh, the silver side is going to be selectively picking out uh, larger plankton and small fish out of the water. This is a uh, pipefish. Pipefish are basically stretched out seahorses. Um, they have uh, a plating of scales that serve as a, kind of an armor plating for the fish. They feed on very small uh, little crustaceans, uh, amphipods, isopods, things like that. Uh, also small fish. You'll notice he has a very tiny little mouth. So uh, his mouth is kind of like a, a little vacuum cleaner suctioning up small creatures. Uh, another interesting thing about the pipefish, much like the seahorses, the males carry the eggs until they hatch. Uh, the male will actually have uh, a pouch on its, uh, the male seahorse will have a pouch on its belly to do that. Uh, in the male pipefish, they develop a groove on the belly to, to carry the eggs. One of the puffer fish. So its strategy for survival is it can inflate its body full of seawater to make itself too large to be swallowed. It also has spiky scales uh, around it. Uh, that would serve to make a very prickly mouthful for any potential predators. Look down! Look down. Awesome! Oh, and squid! Oh, I never... Look at all this. It's a whole... Squid. It's a whole... Awesome. School of squid. Look at that one with the color. So. Okay. So these are squid. Uh, they uh, are one of the cephalopod mollusks. So that means uh, the head-footed animals. One of the most interesting things about uh, the cephalopods is they have these little chromatophores, these little color-changing cells. 
So basically, they work almost like the, the pixels on a, on a computer screen. They're little bags of pigment, and they have the ability to expand or contract them uh, to change their color. Uh, so they can use this to express uh, uh, how they're feeling, if they're angry, uh, or if they're uh, uh, chasing food. Uh, so they can serve a variety of, of different purposes. Notice the little tiny beak there. They have a beak almost like a parrot's beak that fits right in between uh, all of their arms and tentacles. They have little suction cups on their tentacles uh, that in the case of a uh, squid uh, usually have little claw-like structures around the edge of the suction cup that help them better grasp their soft-bodied prey like fish. Uh, you may notice they also have the ability to eject uh, an ink smoke screen uh, to help them avoid predators. So if they uh, are pursued by a predator, they can squirt out that ink uh, and it will hide where they have escaped to. They also have these little fins on the side of the body that they use for swimming in the water. surface of the mud flat you can see evidence of where various species of marine life have been feeding so if you look closely at the mud flat here you'll see little tiny dimple like structures like somebody was gently poking their finger into the sand those are the mouth prints of the spot um, you can tell a lot about what a fish does uh, and what where it feeds and what it feeds on by simply looking where the mouth is positioned so with the spots, they have a, a downward turn mouth, so they're bottom feeders, and they basically feed by gargling the mud. They swim along, they bite up a little mouthful of mud, swish it around the mouth. They use gill rakers to trap little worms hiding in the mud and the sand, and then they blow the mud out through their gill flaps. Uh, something else you'll notice are the puddles out here. The puddles are actually evidence of another larger fish feeding, in this case stingrays. So stingrays will come in here when the tide is high, and they use their flaps, almost like wings, to blow the sand and mud away to unearth clams uh, and worms and shrimp. Uh, and that's how they make their living. Another thing you'll notice out here, all the little black pebbles, those are actually snails. Those are mud snails, and they're part of the cleanup crew here in the salt marsh. Uh, they will quickly uh, converge on any dead fish or other marine life left behind by the tide. In the absence of that, they will feed on that detritus, that decomposed plant matter that we talked about earlier. One of the most important roles of the salt marsh is as a nursery for the oceans. Most of our types of marine life will actually grow up in the salt marsh. If you think about it, it's really an ideal spot for a nursery. Uh, you'll find none of the strong currents and crashing waves that you find out on the beach. Um, there are plenty of hiding spots with all of the sparkina grass, and there's an abundance of food from the detritus, that nutrient soup in the water. Some of the juvenile sea creatures that we've seen out here today include a look down. Now the look down is the, the pretty yellow and silver fish with the long fins. Now as the look down gets bigger, those uh, tall dorsal fins will gradually shorten. The look down is a predator. Uh, it is so narrow that it can swim face first up to its potential prey and be virtually invisible. Another fascinating sea creature we caught is the striped burrfish. This is one of the puffer fish. It's able to avoid predators by inflating its body with seawater, turning into a round spiky ball that's too difficult for most predators to eat. 
The fish with the dark black line running through its eyes uh, is a juvenile gray snapper, sometimes known as a mangrove snapper. Uh, and it's a classic example of one of the fish that uses the salt marsh as a nursery. Of course, we also have some fish that live more full time in the salt marsh. The smallest fish that you see in here is a tiny striped killifish. It will live pretty much its entire life here in the salt marsh. Uh, another one, uh, the almost clear fish with the silver stripe is the aptly named Silverside. Uh, they will spend much of their life here in the salt marsh as well.